Again, good morning, everyone. We'll be jumping to another topic. I have uh, seen a lot of your outputs in your LMS pertaining to the last activity. It is quite good. Oh, well, you're one of my favorite class. I just want you to know because you're so attentive at the same time, you, you're really into it and you know what I mean. So I'll be sharing my screen. We'll be talking about mirrors and lenses. Let us explore the world of mirrors and lenses and how these actually affects us, including how the materials we're using, how these also gives an impact to the images that we actually see. Again, mirrors and lenses. Uh, one of the greatest invention all throughout the world is the microscopes. Because this is the start we're in, we discover that cells that the an organism is composed of cells. Anyway, microscopes let us peer inside in this in the invisible world. Wait, someone's in the waiting room. Our eyes could never see. Of course, telescopes take us far beyond Earth to stars and planets of the night sky. Uh, this is now the the start also of observing how our planet Earth actually moves into it and how these um, celestial bodies move because of these lenses. Movie projectors throw enormous images into screens and light houses cast reassuring beams of light far across the ocean. Amazing curves of glasses and plastic cold lenses make all these things possible. Let's take a closer look of what they are and how they work. Please read, Veloso. Uh, Veloso. Yes. A lens is a transparent piece of glass or plastic with at least one curved surface. It gets its name from the Latin word for lentil, a type of balls used in cooking. But don't let that confuse you. There's no real reason for this other than the most common kind of lens, called a convex lens, looks very much like a lentil. Are you familiar with a lentil? No. Lentil. A lentil would look like this. Look at this one. It looks like a seed, actually. So that is why lenses in, in Spanish and in Visaya, we are called them as lente or lente. Ba? Because of this, the form itself. It is not confusing actually. It is just because of the form. It forms like that one, a lentil. It's a plant. It is actually a veggie, one of the plant seed. Uh, please read, Audrey. A lens works by refraction. It bends light rays as they pass through it so they can change direction. You can read a full explanation of why this happens in our art online. life. That means the rays seem to come from a point that's closer or further away from where they actually originate. And that's what makes objects seen through a lens seem either bigger or smaller than they really are. Correct. It works by refraction. What do you mean by refraction, by the way? Any idea about refraction? In our like the, the light can pass through it, but the light is, is actually curved and not on a straight forward, like okay. straight forward form. Actually, you have a point in our correct? Light passes through, but it is not in a straight line. It is refracted, meaning to say it is bent. So, again, this lens works by refraction or bending of light. Aside from that, we are also talking about light, right? Photography is also light. Therefore, if there is no light, tendency is there is no image or we cannot see anything. That's the real score because 
we can only see an image if there is some light. And these lenses can only work if there is light. Question so far? Question so far? Okay, let's move. Please read, Inario. A lens reduces its focusing effect because light travels more slowly in the lens than in the surrounding air. So that refraction. An abrupt bending of a light beam occurs both where the beam enters the lens and where it emerges from the lens into the air. Correct. A lens also produces its focusing effect. It depends upon the lens. If it is flat, it will not focus. But if it is in a curve, or in a convex or concave lens, there is an effect, right? There is an effect. Let's move forward. Any questions so far? None. Okay. So this is your, the bending of light or it focuses. Now, if you're going to look at the converging lens or called, we usually call this as convex lens, it is actually in a lintel form, or it like it looks like a seed. Now, because of the because of the form, it actually creates a focus. Have you seen the focal plane? This one. This is the reason why our camera can actually focus. This is also the reason why our eyes can actually focus, because our eyes or our our um, our eyes is composed of a converging lenses. It is not. This is also the reason why the camera can focus in a far area or in a far region because of these lenses, the converging lenses. Yes. Um, it's, it's also glasses, like glasses for eyes are also lenses, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's, it has a different it's composed of a different lenses to tell you honestly there are a lot of glasses that has a dual vision are oh, you seeing the dual vision glasses okay there's a near and there's a far right the, those are composed of different lenses and you will talk about that one uh, all right let's move forward Let's move now to the type of lenses, okay? There are two main types of lenses known as convex or converging and concave or diverging, divergent and convergent. Convex, convex lenses or lens, sometimes called a positive lens, the glass or plastic surface bulge outwards in the center giving a classic lentil-like shape. The one we're talking about is a seed, it's a plant, a convex lens is also called converging lens because it makes parallel light rays passing through through it and bend inwards to meet or converge at a point just beyond the lens known as the focal point. Again, these are the lens used by your camera, by your camera lens. What else? Your phone is also using this one, the camera in your phone. What else? Um, the magnifying glasses. Have you seen a magnifying glass? It is actually a convex lens, okay? That is also the reason why if you're going to use a magnifying glass in a sun rays, you can actually create some fire because it creates a focus. It actually gathers all the light and, and put it in the focus. That's the reason. Let's move forward. Any questions so far? Please ask questions, right? So this is now the form of your convex lens. Okay, there are certain focal point or focal length. And again, it actually um, gets all those light towards the center. The center there we're talking about is the focal point. Supposed to be, we have a lot of problems with this, but I think uh, we will be discussing all those problems in your physical science um, soon in, in grade 11 and grade 12. We'll be experiencing a lot of problems with this. 
no, the focal points, and also how the light actually uh, generates at the center. Convex lenses are used in things like telescopes, binoculars, to bring distant light rays to focus in your eyes. This is the reason. Okay. Again, the, it is a big factor, or it is a big, uh, a, a greatest invention, uh, just like the microscopes and the telescopes, because this brings up closer to the real world, uh, the observations. We are actually living with all those things without us knowing what are those. But because of this, we discovered uh, the cell, microscopic organisms. And because of this, we also discover the heavenly bodies in the outer space. Let's move now to concave lens or concave lenses. It's exactly opposite with the outer surface curving inward. So instead, if con convex is actually involves concave is curving inward okay so it makes parallel light curve outward or diverge divergent away that's why concave lens are sometimes called diverging lenses want you to remember the difference between concave and convex lenses is to think concave lens caving inwards so there's there's an inward um cave or engraved no, it was it's actually engraved inward so the way we create concave lenses is through a diamond a diamond cutter so we actually engrave the diamond cutter inwards to create a concave lens so this is not the form of your concave lens okay Again, it's inward. So therefore, the light there is scattered, right? Instead of focusing, right? Concave lenses are used in things like TV projectors. When you are talking about your projectors, have you seen a projector? Have you used ever used a projector? DLP, digital light projector? It is actually using a concave lens. Okay, to make light rays spread out into the distance in flashlights. Now, we are using now concave lens in flashlights. And easier to do jobs like a mirror, which usually weighs much less than a lens and is cheaper to manufacture as well. There you go. The third type is com compound lenses. Okay, it is possible to make lenses that behave in more complex ways by combining convex and concave lenses. A lens that uses two or more simpler lenses in this way is called a compound lenses or compound lens, just like your eyeglasses. Your eyeglasses is actually composed of convex and concave lenses. It depends upon you know, the grade of the lens, which is positive or negative. Remember that these lenses works in a different way, right? If it is if you are a positive or a negative, nearsighted and farsighted, it depends upon. Question so far. If you ever look to a binoculars, a telescope or a magnifying glass, actually I have a magnifying glass here, you'll know that some lenses magnify or reduce the apparent size of an object much more than others. There is a simple measurement that tells you how powerful a lens is, and it's known as the focal length. Okay? You, can also, uh, you can also hear this term in photographers. We're actually uh, using focal length in our lenses, in our camera lens, focal length. If how many millimeter? Focal length of a lens is the distance from the center of the lens to the point at which it focuses light. Remember, again, light rays. Remember, 
that photography, again, we can only see images if there is light. And even colors. The colors are the reflection of light. Okay? The shorter the focal length, the more powerful the lens. It's easy to see why an ordinary piece of glass would be like lens of infinite focal length and would bring light rays to the focus at all. On the other hand, an infinitely powerful lens would bring lace of rays to the focus in an infinite short distance with zero focal length. Okay? A real lens is somewhere between these two extremes. Again, your lenses here, we're talking about the, the power of your lenses. Okay? We're talking about how infinite your lens can do. Okay? In terms of, like, for example, the water itself. The water itself or a glass of water has a focal length. It depends upon also yeah, the object behind. Let's move forward. You'll find focal lengths written either in an ordinary unit's length, such as centimeters, millimeters, or inches. And usually, in photography, we're using millimeters. Okay, mm. 35 mm, 45 mm, okay, 18 to 105 mm, or in special optical units called diopters. Are you familiar with diopters? Have you heard the word diopters? No. no teacher. Okay. The diopter is a measurement of lens. Uh, reciprocal to the focal length in meters. Okay. Again, when you're talking about diopters, it is in meter form. Wait, someone's asking question. Let me check on this. Okay. So, again, one divided by the focal length. So, one diopter is equal to one meter mil millimeters to two diopters equal to 0.5 mm or mil 0.5 meters, millimeters. And three diopters is equal to 0.33 meters. And so on. Again, one diopter is equal to one meter. Two diopters is equal to 0.5. The lesser. Three diopters is equal to 0.33 millimeters. And so on. Eyeglass prescription from the optic opticians typically show the strength of the corrective lenses you need in diopters. So meaning to say, these are now the, the one used by your medical practitioners talking about your lenses, the grade itself, okay? The diopters. We're talking about positive. Okay, this is positive, okay? The other side is negative. So it will increase in number, okay? Focal length isn't the only important feature of a lens. Bigger lenses gather more light than smaller lens or smaller ones. So they make a brighter image. This is particularly important if you are choosing a lens for a camera. Remember, your camera is a lens. And the bigger the lens, the more light it gathers. Because the amount of light the lens gathers will determine what the image looks like. That is why some of the photographers, if you're going to observe them, they have this bigger lens, bigger than the body of their camera. What is the purpose then? The purpose then is to gather more light. And the more light they gather, the more, the more brilliant the image is because of the light. Okay, again, photography is light. Camera lenses are usually rated with a measurement called the focal number or F number, which is the focal length divided by the, dia the diameter. Generally speaking, lenses with small focal number make brighter image. Okay? F 1.8 or F 2.8. Oh, are you familiar with this? The focal length? F 1.8, 1.4, 1.2. The smaller the number, the bigger the, the, the focus. No, the smaller the number, the brighter image. Lenses with a higher focal number have a bigger depth of focus. 
like focal point 3.2, 3.5. Who among you here has a DSLR? Points to DSLR. My teacher. DSLR, digital light, light lens reflex. I know a big old camera. Camera, yeah, the camera itself, DSLR. Ah, okay. Okay, if you have DSLR there, you can see the focal, F. You look at the lens, in front of the lens, you can see the focal, length, okay? That is the F number, okay? Essentially, more of the object you're, you're photographing and its surroundings are in focus at the same time. Let's move forward. Oh, by the way, I, I know about this simply because I am also a photographer. So we have uh, we are actually exposed to different lenses and how these lenses actually work. You will be amazed in the world of lens. Lenses are everywhere, of course, in the world around us. In everything from car headlamps and flashlights to red lights used in electronic instruments panels, we are actually using lens. Our eyes could be probably the most amazing lens. Do you know that your eyes are the most amazing lens? Why? What happens when you look at the world around you? One minute you're staring at the ground in front of your feet. Uh, we're talking about the, the focusing time of your eyes. Diba? When you look something, you can actually focus directly. Okay? That's the power of your eyes. Because you have optic nerves in your eyes, which analyzes images. And in a snap of your eyes, you can actually focus directly. Seconds later, you hear an airplane screaming fast, turn your head and watch it fly by. So meaning to say you can focus directly. This do this trick with a pair of binoculars and you'll find it takes you quite a while to adjust the focus from near side. That's how powerful your eyes is. Again, your eyes is composed of lens. Try to your naked eye and you won't even notice what you're doing. It's because your eyes have flexible lenses. Correct. And controlled by tiny muscles, the optic nerves, that can uh, both in and out by changing the shape. Do you know that your eyes can change shape? And your retina also changes shape. It depends upon the light coming in. Okay. If you're seeing a very, very light image, a very, very light uh, environment, your eyes seems to what? To close. Because there are a lot of lights coming into your eyes. But if you are in the very dark room, your eyes become bigger. And your retina becomes bigger. Why? You're looking for a light. Okay? That's how your eyes change. And again, this is instant. You, you actually don't know about this. So you are not aware that you're changing the, the size of your eyes. But if you're going to observe that one, we have already done this one in my grade, I think the previous years, grade five or grade four, we have an experiment with this. And I have let them you know, experience how they, their eyes change. And they observe their eyes. From the prints of your finger to the surface of the moon. Yes, actually, what your your eyes are very brilliant so it changes it depends upon your environment what if there's a question there what if your eyes will, will not change even if um there is a, a very very bright environment or an object very very bright object what will happen to your eyes damage damage correct it will damage why too much light coming in or too much um photon coming into your eyes can actually damage your lens. Okay? Your eyes looks like a camera also. It has sensors and your sensors are your optic nerves going to your brain. Let's move forward. Excuse me, Chair. Yes, Haley. Um, If we're going to, uh, out of curiosity, Chair, yes. if we're going to use a telescope to um, look at the sun from outer space, is it also going to damage your eyes? Yes. 
the answer is yes, Bill also. So how did they um study the sun? What did they use? They used a, a, an equipment which minimizes um light rays. Like for example, have you observed somebody uh doing uh doing metal crops? And uh they, they're using uh a glass. Have you seen the glasses using the metal crops? Panang protective glasses nila ba? The dark one? Have you seen somebody uh, uh, doing a metal crop? Panang tig symbol bitaw? Like uh, like making a water pitcher? Welding. Okay. Welding, for example, you are creating a very, very light image or very, very light object that actually can damage your optic nerves. So what they're doing, they have this protective gear in their eyes, which uh, not just protect their eyes, but protect them from, uh, from the spill, but also protect them from the, the violence of light. Okay, so they cover their eyes with those equipment in order for them to see the, 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 the thing which is glowing or the welding area. Same. Same as the scientists, they're using that one also. There's uh, the material used there is the a, a solar protector. I think it is a solar protector. So meaning to say, it actually minimized the effects of light, giving you also a, a detailed image, but in darker form. It looks like dark there. If you've seen some, please take a look at it. Huh? So if somebody is doing welding and then there is a protective gear, take a look at the protective gear. It's really dark. That is to protect the light against the violence of light. Question so far? But, Another question? But, but sure, some of them, sure, they just use normal one, sage. Hmm. Delicado. Yes. If they're using only normal shade, definitely it can damage your eyes. It can damage your eyes. Uh, signs that your eyes uh, becomes damaged. Dry eyes, number one. Terry eyes, number two. Red eyes, irritating. And uh, some of them experience also moving objects or, or some, something is moving in the side of their eyes. That is called eye fatigue. Okay. Now your eye fatigue is not a common problem with eyes. Because if you have eye fatigue, we need to consult a doctor to help you out with your eyes. Remember that that is the only way for you to see. No other way. If, you, if your eyes will be damaged, you cannot actually see. That's the problem. So... You need to have, you need to consult a physician if in case you have a problem with your eyes. Just like mine. No? I, I always change um, glasses because sometimes I cannot see clearly. And this is damaged because I am exposed into computers. I, I always uh, go into computers, repair computers, and all of those. So it actually can damage your eyes. The radiation in the monitors can damage your eyes, even phones. On sorry, dates also. It can damage your eyes. Just be careful with your eyes. Okay? Question so far? Another question? Any question? Doubt? Let me check on the chat box. Photochromic. Okay, photochromic. We'll be discussing about photochromic later. You all have lenses in your eyes, but many of the us balance extra lens ones on the end of our nose. To correct long and short sight, more glass and plastic lens are used for eyeglasses and contact lens than for any other purpose. Of course, because these lenses has grain. Okay, remember it has magnification power or, mag or magnifying pow power. There are all kinds of eyeglass lenses, including eye, uh, light sensitive photochromic ones, 
that darken in sunlight and double up as sunglasses. Okay. When you say photochromic, it is light sensitive. Have you seen a, a glasses which if touches by light, it will become darker? Ano mainitan ba? Yeah. May go sa light, no? Mo dark. Oh, may mo siyang shade. Or slight lang slight. It is called photochromic. Okay. Chromic. Chrome. Monochrome. Chromic. Darker. It will actually create a darker view. That is to protect your, your eyes. Okay. Again, photochromic. These are uh, light sensitive glasses. Which can change its color if touched by light. Mahimo siyang ay, uh, sunglasses. But it's light. No? Sunglasses are really dark, right? But in this purpose, this is to create a darker view if touches by light. Okay? Questions so far? All right. Let's continue. We still have five minutes more. You also find lenses and binoculars which use two or three lenses in each other on each of the cylinders serving your eyes. The telescopes, though not all microscopes use them, and some of the microscopes as a different uh, lens, set of lens, or ordinary optical microscope use a series of glass lenses. If you're going to you know, dissect a, a microscope, you can see a lot of lenses. I usually repair microscopes. And you know, every now and then, if I, if I open a microscope, I am really amazed how these lenses are actually uh, has a magnifying effect or magnifying power. Because those are just lens, but you can see a microscopic organism out of there. Isn't it amazing? While superpower electron microscopes, this one, use electromagnets to bend electron beams that help us see in even more detail. Um, optical microscopes are different, into, different with a powerful electron microscopes because electron microscopes uses electromagnets and bend electrons. So you're, they're using elect, elect, electron beams rather than the ordinary optical microscope, the, the compound microscope, the one we use in the, in, the, in the laboratory, those are compound microscopes. We're using lights, right? But electron microscope, they're using electron beams to, clear, to, to see clearly or in more detail an organism or a microscopic organism or even cells or even DNA, okay? They're using electron microscope. To view that one. Okay, let's move forward. Movie projectors and projection televisions use lenses to convert small movie pictures into giant images, as a lot of people can view at once. Cameras work the opposite way, catching light rays from the distance and bringing them to the focus. On chemically treated plastic film, remember before they're using a plastic film or a light sensitive electron chips called CCD. This is electron chips. These are considered as your sensors, image sensors, okay? Do not be confused with the terms. These are just image sensors. Plastic films, these are film used before, no? These are films used before. Could you still remember the films used by your camera? You need to develop that one. So those are just films. Let's move forward. You can even find lens built into magazines and book covers to make images change as you shift your head from side to side. Okay, have you seen this one? If you're going to shift the book cover, it will change the color or will change the image. This cunning trick is called Lenticular printing, again, because of your angle, okay? Lenticular printing. Because of your angle, it actually changes the image in the cover. But it really just means printing with a built-in lens because there is a built-in lens there, okay? It's either plastic or rubber, okay? They're using, usually they're using plastics, 
and those covers. Okay, let's move forward. Let's move now to mirror. Still have one minute left. Okay. Mirrors are different. Why? Let's talk about the law of reflection. If um, lenses uses refraction or the bending of light, mirrors also uses reflection. Okay, what is reflection then? Let's tackle the law of reflection. Please read, Biloso. The law of reflection says that when a ray of light hits a surface, it bounces in a certain way, like a tennis ball thrown against a wall. The incoming angle, called the angle of incidence, is always equal to the angle leaving the surface, or the angle of reflection. When light hits a surface at a low angle, like on a lake on a sunset, it bounces off at the same low angle and hits your eyes full blast, rather than obliquely as when the sun hits overhead. This is why the sun's glare during the evening and morning is so much more intense than during the rest of the day. Correct. Because of the reflection. Again, when you're talking about the law of reflection, the ray of light hits the surface and it bounces in a certain way. Bouncing. So if refraction is bending, reflection is bouncing or it bounces. Okay? Again, there is a certain angle which is called the angle of incidence, which is equal to the angle leaving the surface. 